So think about old Chinese coins. It looked like old oh, Chinese. When you, when you slice the donkey, yeah, yeah. it's like oh. Chinese coins. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on everybody? Welcome to another international episode of Fun Bros Food. We are in Beijing in a district called Beijing Chao. We're about to do a Lao Beijing food tour. We got Ricky here. Ricky. All right, Ricky, uh, can you describe real quick the tour that we're going to be going on? So we will be doing a three hour walking tour of all the hutong, old Beijing hutongs. And we are introduced guests from overseas to all the Beijing people, locals will eat. So this is like regular people food. This is not some weird, crazy tourist food. This is what people are eating in the hutongs for dinner. All right guys, this is Old Beijing Dinner Tour. Let's go. We have a famous street food here. So guo kui is it's a flatbread with some beef inside. Yo, the guo kui was the perfect way to start. These are one some, pair. These are hutong shui jiao. Whoa, Whoa. Inside. hold up, barely cooked. <laughs> Surprisingly, that tastes kind of like kind of Mongolian. Yeah, look at that pot. Oh, snap. Oh, yeah, I'm excited about this. Here. All right, let's crack open our sealed plates yeah. that are very clean. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's how I didn't do it. I didn't do it. You see this real Lao Beijing style? The uh, ma Fermented tofu. Ma tofu. Right? And Chinese chai. Mm -hmm. This is Kugla or Genghis's hat right here. Yo, Andrew, I told you we were gonna get Lao Beijing hot pot. Oh yeah. Lao Beijing hot pot is the most underrated style of hot pot. This. Oh, this, this, right this is here. This special. Let me tell you this, man. It's just a bunch of dude gummies hey, in here. Hey, let me just say this. Dried seaweed, dried mushroom, dried dates, ginger, and uh, okay. Hold in. David, you are cooking the Lao Beijing. Cool. We have this little like cover where we want to close off the heat. Yeah. So it's just like a hookah. So let's go with the mushrooms. Hit them with the mushrooms. So this is dopey. So this is the skin that's on top of the soy milk as you make it. You know, kind of a film forms. So they, the chef scoops it off, lets it dry, and then fries it. And that's what this is. All right, here we got the spinach. Oh, first piece of lamb into the mahjong. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. That is the best thing I've eaten since being in Beijing. Yo, this is really good, dog. Oh my god. Mahjong to me, you know, it's one of those tasty things that I could have seen being eaten like 600 years ago. That lamb is actually surprisingly delicious. I think it's better without the flavor because if you had to dip it in that much mahjong with a flavorful broth, wow. it would be too crazy. Yeah. So pee. Yeah. Mm. This is my favorite thing that I've eaten since Beijing, bro. It's just so here on a yangro piece out of a hat. I give traditional Lao Beijing style hot pot a five out of five. Guys, I'm really trying to eat more here, but we gotta keep going in the next spot. Is Fiona in a C-pop ballad right now? Did you ride here from your house? I did. Oh my goodness. Hey, what's up guys? She really does this live in the Hutong. We are at uh, a wine place called Noyan. This is Mijio, essentially sake, but with sticky rice instead of sushi rice. Are these beans? These yeah, fried beans. beans. Fava beans. Fried fava beans. Mm -hmm. Do we eat it before or after? It's a, a too late. Palate. Eat it before. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's very good. These are good. It's addictive. It's very wow. good. Wow. Drink this Mijio with some fava beans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So we should have, number one is just the yeah, basic classic, uh, twice fermented, uh, less sweet. Okay. Number, number one. one. 
Oh, thank God that was a, like a quarter shot. It give you a, a, a crispy kind of flavor. Number two, rose petals. That was wow. nice. Wow. Right there. This type of drink would probably more rival like a soju or sake. I look forward to this one. Osmansis. Osmansis. Ooh, that had a kick. Ooh. I like it. Wow, a little bit tart. Yeah. Mm. Another awesome citrus sour kick. Mm. Number four is from Sour Plum. Number four, Sour, sour Plum. plum. Yeah, I can feel it. So number five and number six is the uh, premium line. Two years fermentation. Number five, classic. Oh, I know that right. one. That was classic. That was that was my favorite one so far, actually. Yeah. Smooth, so sweet. sweet. Yeah. Number six, double off Mansus. <laughs> Oh, that was that was really nice too. Wow! It's either the rose petal or the double osmanthus. For me, it was the classic or the double osmanthus. For me, it's the same with Andrew. Chug it, chug it. I'm down. How much is one? Six. Yo, we uh, have arrived at the next spot. <laughs> Wang Peng. Wang Peng and Leo. Wang, it's not Wang Peng, it's Wang Peng. Guys, uh, we are about to eat a donkey burger, meaning? It is truly a donkey burger. As in donkey meat, okay? Yes. Me Shrek and donkey. Donkey! Which is perfect because Fiona's here today. What? All right, but before we go in doing something like this, like Ooh. donkey burgers, we gotta take a shot of this fresh beer that I'm holding. Absolutely. The quality of which we're unclear on. Came from a tap. Oh, sh. <laughs> looks like. See, like you're scared to pour it. Bad beer. Bad to bad beer. The bagged beer, not Duh. bad. Oh. It's, it's fine. It's fine. It's light. And for me, beer is not. It's not good or bad. It's just easy or hard to drink. I'm a beer connoisseur, clearly. So donkey is a gamey, me, but it's not very gamey. It's kind of mild, but it has but it's pretty lame. So how they prepare it is they uh, they cooked donkey meat for 12 hours, slow cooked basically. Uh, donkey meat is more expensive, so some people selling beef as donkey meat. <laughs> Oh my god! That was crazy! And do you guys know the uh, the, uh, the word for the uh, donkey? Tian rou called money meat. Uh, why do you think, do you think it's called money meat? Because everyone wants it. No. So think about old Chinese coins. It looks like old oh, Chinese. When you, when you slice the donkey, yeah. it looks like Chinese coins! Yeah. <laughs> this is not donkey. Donkey! Let's do it. Donkey burger. Wow, that's crispy. Mmm. It's not bad. I can taste it's a little gamey, but it's not too gamey. The peppers are doing wonders, too. Mm -hmm. Honestly, the way they marinate it is actually really good. Mm. This horsehong is really crispy. It's actually not as dry as it looks. Mm -hmm. I'm actually a huge fan of having the peppers in there, those fresh peppers. They add that burst of heat that you need. Pretty good. Overall, Dude. a donkey filly. <laughs> Sans cheese. That's just a donkey filly with no cheese, huh? Donkey cheese steak. You guys all had a Biang Biang noodle before, right? Yeah. So that's the character for Biang Biang. Most complicated character in Chinese language, 58 strokes. Also, what I'm gonna name my kids. Well, let's try it. Mm -hmm. I can help you. Do the Biang Biang first. Yeah. Am I, can I use Chopsticks with both hands? Damn, look at this noodle, dog. It's really hard here, let me help you. Oh, oh it's so, ah. You took the noodle, go, go, take it. Okay, take it. Take it. When people make this noodle, there's just a, there, there, some people put a lot of sauce in the bowl and some people just put, you know what I mean? Like a little. Yum, yum, yum. 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 It's got a nice <laughs> bite to it. I can taste that oil that they pour on top. It was a nice finish. After add a little vinegar, it will change the kind of flavor. Oh, that was good. Yeah. When you get it, it's like two different noodles in one. Because you have what, like some sort of fan chia, chow gan, like tomato egg. Yeah. Well, you mix it with some chili garlic. Notice, I noticed that. We got this green noodle uh, sort of on a whim, 
that a lot more people are getting um, health conscious in China. In US, it takes like, what, like 20, 30 years to people to like, we need to get healthy. In China, like three years, like we need to get healthy. I remember I got described as a uh, little chubby on the Chinese internet. <laughs> so good. I'm not gonna eat this anymore. Ah! Wow, I really like this. It's light, and I like the chili flakes on it. Mm -hmm. I don't really like eating hot stuff, but it's it's, it's not spicy. It tastes like a mm. like a fettuccine. <laughs> <laughs> to turn into our last spot. This is number five on our tour. The sun is down. I'm getting full. Yeah, but one last stop. Let's see what we're gonna eat. So you are turning the whole house to a chicken wing restaurant. Do they have different flavors of chicken wings? They have, so basically, that's how they do the chicken wings. They marinate overnight. They have all those seasonings. We don't know all of them. This is the whole thing, or is there another one? This is the Oh, wow, it looks so spicy. This Buffalo Wild Wings. This is Ruka's Wild Wings. This is Fifth Brother's Wild Wings. Is it not spicy? Not spicy. So you have little sparkling on the pepper. Oh my gosh, okay. Bon appetit. Oh, very hot. It's sweet, it's And this is a non-spicy one. There's definitely honey. There's cumin. There's Sichuan pepper corn. Yeah. This is awesome. I feel like some people in the States, they try to say, oh, this is like a Sichuan flavor, Sichuan wing. This is the real deal. I can feel it on my tongue. It's very slight, though. Yeah. I'm going for the extra spicy one next. You guys ready for the spicy? I'll try, I'll try. Fifth Brother Spicy Wings. Shout out to Wuka. Whoa. Mm. That's hot. It's not too hot. I don't think this is the hottest flavor out there. No, no, it's not. No. I actually like the spicy one better. Mm -hmm. no. It's almost jerky like. Yeah. Just a little bit. Like a dry rub jerk on a chicken. Mm -hmm. It almost reminds me of almost like a pulled pork. Mm -hmm. The honey on this really is making it taste a little bit like Western. In Western barbecue, there's a lot of honey as well for the sweet ones. But the, obviously, the peppercorn is totally different. Yeah. All right, everybody. We're here at Fifth Brothers Chicken Wing Spot. We're in his house. These chicken wings are delicious. But you know, that pretty much wraps up our untour Beijing dinner. Zan, when you said that this was like a regular Beijing person's like dinner, not like a super fancy person, not a tourist, not an international person. This was like a local dinner. I really feel that because you can look at the people around us and they're very local. I think it just means a lot to see a way of life that's probably going away, unfortunately. Um, but that's just sort of the way life is. And I think the best thing that we can do is just enjoy it while it's here and then document it and then think about it. Well, obviously for you guys coming here, it's probably interesting, but for all the other people who we've seen roll through the doors, it's like normal everyday food. And this is just life. Exactly. It's very humble. It's very uh, down to earth. It's filling and it's it's enough for you to get through and get by through the day or night. I really enjoy to introduce the food and the Chinese culture, especially the old Beijing culture to all the guests. It's a good way for uh, People all over the world can try and see some uh, a little bit of Beijing culture. I think. All right, you guys, in the comment section below, please let us know what you thought of the tour. Please check out this movie called Lao Pao, Mr. Six. If that's a fifth brother, he's the sixth brother. All right, guys, everybody, check out Untours. We'll leave a link down below. And until next time, we're in Beijing. We out. Peace. They eat the fruit that looks like a young baby, and then they actually grew it in a side of casing and made it actually look like a baby. Dog, this is the weirdest fruit I've ever eaten. You know what? It actually tastes like anything. It's not sweet.